Hello everyone. Welcome to the fourth module of the paper Cell Biology. In this module, we will study about the ultrastructure of the cell membrane and the various subcellular organelles such as the Golgi bodies, endoplasmic reticulum, mitochondria, ribosomes, lysosomes, peroxisomes, chloroplast and nucleus. This module would give us a fairly good idea about the ultrastructure of a cell and the functions of the various organelles present inside the cell. Structure and function of cell membrane. The outer walls of a house or car provide a strong inflexible barrier that protects its human inhabitants from an unpredictable and harsh external world. Similarly, we might expect the outer boundary of a living cell to be constructed of an equally tough and impenetrable barrier because it must also protect its delicate internal contents from a non-living and often inhospitable environment. Yet, cells are separated from the external world by a thin, fragile structure called the plasma membrane that is only 5 to 10 nanometer wide. Since it is very thin, no hint of the plasma membrane is detected when a section of the cell is examined under a light microscope. It wasn't until the late 1950s that techniques for preparing and staining tissue had progressed to the point where the plasma membrane could be resolved by the electron microscope. Major functions of membranes in the life of a cell Compartmentalization Membranes are continuous unbroken sheets and they enclose compartments. The plasma membrane encloses the contents of the entire cell, whereas the nuclear and cytoplasmic membranes enclose diverse intracellular spaces. The various membrane-bound compartments of the cell possess different contents. Membrane compartmentalization allows specialized activities to proceed without external interference and enables cellular activities to be regulated independently of one another. Scaffold for biochemical activities. Membranes enclose compartments but are also a distinct compartment themselves. Because of their construction, membranes provide the cell with an extensive framework or scaffolding within which components can be ordered for effective interaction, providing a selectively permeable barrier. Membranes prevent the unrestricted exchange of molecules from one side to the other. At the same time, membranes provide the means of communication between the compartments they separate. Transporting solutes. The plasma membrane contains the machinery for physically transporting substances from one side of the membrane to the other, often from a region where the solute is present at much higher concentration. The plasma membrane is also able to transport specific ions, thereby establishing ionic gradients across itself. Responding to external signals. The plasma membrane plays a critical role in the response of a cell to external stimuli, a process known as signal transduction. Membranes possess receptors that combine with specific molecules or ligands having a complementary structure. Different types of cells have membranes with different receptors and are therefore capable of recognizing and responding to different ligands in their environment. The interaction of a plasma membrane receptor with an external ligand may cause the membrane to generate a signal that stimulates or inhibits internal activities. Intercellular interaction. The plasma membrane allows cells to recognize and signal one another, to adhere when appropriate and to exchange materials and information. Energy transduction. Membranes are intimately involved in the process by which one type of energy is converted to another type, that is energy transduction. The most fundamental energy transduction occurs during photosynthesis when energy in sunlight is absorbed by membrane-bound pigments converted into chemical energy and stored in carbohydrates. Membranes are also involved in the transfer of chemical energy from carbohydrates and fats to ATP. Ultrastructure of cell membrane 
Cell membranes are crucial to the life of a cell. The plasma membrane encloses the cell, defines its boundaries and maintains the essential differences between the cytosol and the extracellular environment. Despite their different functions, all biological membranes have a general structure. Each is a very thin film of lipid and protein molecules held together by non-covalent interactions. As you can see from this figure, the lipid molecules are arranged as a continuous bilayer about 5 nanometer thick and the protein molecules span the lipid bilayer mediate nearly all the functions of the membrane. Cell membranes are dynamic, fluid structures and most of their molecules move about in the plane of the membrane. The lipid molecules are arranged as a continuous double layer about 5 nanometer thick. The lipid bilayer provides the basic fluid structure of the membrane and serves as a relatively impermeable barrier to the passage of most water soluble molecules. Protein molecules that span the lipid bilayer are called transmembrane proteins, mediate nearly all of the other functions of the membrane transporting specific molecules across it. The lipid bilayer. The first proposal that cellular membranes might contain a lipid bilayer was made in 1925 by two Dutch scientists E. Gotter and F. Grendel. The lipid bilayer provides the basic structure for all cell membranes and it is easily seen by electron microscopy. All of the lipid molecules in cell membrane are amphiphilic, that is, they have a hydrophilic or water-loving polar end and a hydrophobic or water-fearing non-polar end. In this diagram, you can see the arrangement of amphiphatic lipid molecules arranged to form a lipid bilayer. The polar head groups separate the hydrophobic tails from the aqueous cytosolic and extracellular environments. A phospholipid molecule has a strongly non-polar and hydrophobic tail region represented by fatty acid chains and a strongly polar or hydrophilic head region represented by the phosphate group. Due to this property, a phospholipid placed in water forms a lipid bilayer in a characteristic manner. Such an arrangement forms a basic component of plasma membranes. The fluid mosaic model for membranes. The fluid mosaic model of membrane structure was proposed by Singer and Nicholson in 1972. According to this model, which replaced the earlier model of Davson and Danielli, biological membranes can be considered as a two dimensional liquid in which lipid and protein molecules diffuse more or less easily. Although the lipid bilayers that form the basis of the membranes do indeed form two dimensional liquids by themselves. The plasma membrane also contains a large quantity of proteins which provide more structure. Forces such as Van der Waals electrostatic, hydrogen bonds, and non covalent interactions all contribute to the formation of the lipid bilayer. Overall, hydrophobic interactions are the major driving force in the formation of lipid bilayers. Fluidity of membranes. Membranes are not static sheets of molecules locked rapidly in place. A membrane is held together primarily by hydrophobic interactions which are much weaker than covalent bonds. Most of the lipids and some proteins can move laterally that is in the plane of the membrane. The lateral movement of phospholipids within the membrane is rapid. Proteins are much larger and hence move slowly than lipids. In this figure, you can see that lipids move laterally in a membrane, but flip flopping across the membrane is quite rare. As you can see that the degree of saturation also influences the fluidity of the membranes. Unsaturated hydrocarbon tails of phospholipids have kinks that keep the molecules from packing together enhancing membrane fluidity. The fluidity of a lipid bilayer depends on both its composition and its temperature. A synthetic bilayer made from a single type of phospholipid 
changes from a liquid state to a two-dimensional rigid crystalline state at a characteristic freezing point. This change of state is called a phase transition and the temperature at which it occurs is lower if the hydrocarbon chains are short or have double bonds. Composition of a lipid bilayer Membranes are lipid protein assemblies in which the components are held together in a thin sheet by non-covalent bonds. The lipid bilayer serves primarily as a structural backbone of the membrane and provides the barrier that prevents the random movement of water-soluble materials in and out of the cell. The ratio of lipid to protein ratio in a membrane varies depending on the type of cellular membrane. Plasma membrane versus endoplasmic reticulum versus Golgi. The type of organism that is bacterium versus plant versus animal and the type of the cell cartilage versus muscle versus liver. Membrane lipids. Membranes contain a wide diversity of lipids all of which are amphipathic that is they contain both hydrophilic and hydrophobic regions. The most abundant membrane lipids are the phospholipids. These have a polar head group and two hydrophobic hydrocarbon tails. In animal, plant and bacterial cells, the tails are usually fatty acids and they can differ in length normally containing between 14 and 24 carbon atoms. One tail typically has one or more cis double bonds while the other tail does not. There are three main types of membrane lipids, phosphoglycerides, sphingolipids and cholesterol. Phosphoglycerides. Most membrane lipids contain a phosphate group which makes them phospholipids. Because most membrane phospholipids are built on a glycerol backbone, they are called phosphoglycerides. Membrane glycerides are diglycerides. Only two of the hydroxyl groups of glycerol are esterified to fatty acids. The third is esterified to a hydrophilic phosphate group. The bilayer of a fluid mosaic membrane is present in a fluid state and individual lipid molecules can move laterally within the plane of the membrane. Differences in the length and saturation of the fatty acid tails influence how phospholipid molecules pack against each other, thereby affecting the fluidity of the membrane. The main phospholipids in animal cell membranes are the phosphoglycerides, which have a three carbon glycerol backbone. Let us now have a look at the structure of a phosphoglyceride molecule. As you can see in the figure, for example, is a structure of a phosphoglyceride, namely phosphatidylcholine. You can visualize two long chain fatty acids are linked through ester bonds to adjacent carbon atoms of glycerol and the third carbon atom is attached to a phosphate group which in turn is linked to one of several different types of head groups. By combining different head groups and fatty acids, cells make many different types of phosphoglycerides, phosphatidylcholine, phosphatidylethanolamine and phosphatidylserine. In this figure, you can see the major types of phospholipids in mammalian plasma membrane. As you can see, the different head groups are represented by different colors. All the lipid molecules are derived from glycerol except for sphingomyelin which is derived from serine. Sphingolipids. Another important phospholipid called sphingomyelin is built from sphingosine rather than from glycerol. Sphingosine is a long chain acyl chain with an amino group and two hydroxyl groups at one end of the molecule. Cholesterol. Eukaryotic plasma membranes contain large amounts of cholesterol. Cholesterol is a sterol. It contains a rigid ring structure to which is attached a single polar hydroxyl group and a short non-polar hydrocarbon chain. The cholesterol molecules orient themselves in the bilayer with the hydroxyl group close to the polar head groups of adjacent phospholipid molecules. 
cholesterol is absent from the plasma membrane of most plant and all bacterial cells. Cholesterol molecules are oriented with a small hydrophilic hydroxyl group towards the membrane surface and the remainder of the molecule embedded in the lipid bilayer. The hydrophobic rings of a cholesterol molecule are flat and rigid and they interfere with the movements of the fatty acid tails of the phospholipids. By decreasing the mobility of first few CH2 groups of the hydrocarbon chains of the phospholipid molecules, cholesterol makes the lipid bilayer less deformable in this region and thereby decreases the permeability of the bilayer to small water soluble molecules. Although cholesterol tends to make lipid bilayers less fluid at the high concentrations found in most eukaryotic plasma membranes, it also prevents the hydrocarbon chains from coming together and crystallizing. In this way, it inhibits possible phase transitions. The lipid compositions of several biological membranes are compared in the following table. As you can observe from this figure, the bacterial plasma membranes are often composed of one main type of phospholipid and contain no cholesterol. Their mechanical stability is enhanced by on overlying cell wall. Whereas in archae, lipids usually contain 20 to 25 carbon long prenyl chains instead of fatty acids. Prenyl and fatty acid chains are similarly hydrophobic and flexible. The plasma membranes of most eukaryotic cells are more varied than those of prokaryotes and archae, not only in containing large amounts of cholesterol but also in containing a mixture of different phospholipids. In this figure, you can see that the head group of a phospholipid can be choline, that is phosphatidylcholine, serine or phosphatidylserine, inositol or phosphatidyl inositol or ethanolamine or phosphatidyl ethanolamine. The sugar residue on cerebroside is galactose and the sugar chains on gangliosides are made up of varying amounts and arrangements of glucose, galactose, N-acetylgalactosamine and sialic acid. The fatty acyl chains can vary in length and in the number and position of double bonds. Membrane proteins and their functions. A membrane is a collage of different proteins embedded in the fluid matrix of the lipid bilayer. More than 50 kinds of proteins have been found so far in the plasma membrane of red blood cells. For example, depending on the cell type and the particular organelle within that cell, a membrane may contain different proteins. Each membrane protein has a defined orientation relative to the cytoplasm so that the properties of one surface of a membrane are very different from those of the other surface. This asymmetry is referred as membrane sidedness. In the plasma membrane, for example, those parts of membrane proteins that interact with extracellular substances project outward into the extracellular space, whereas those parts of membrane proteins that interact with cytoplasmic molecules project into cytosol. Membrane proteins can be grouped into three distinct classes, integral proteins, peripheral proteins, lipid anchored proteins. Integral proteins. These proteins penetrate the lipid bilayer. Integral proteins are transmembrane proteins, that is, they pass entirely through the lipid bilayer and thus have domains that protrude from both the extracellular and cytoplasmic sides of the membrane. Some integral proteins have only one membrane spanning segment, whereas others are multi-spanning. Genome sequencing studies suggest that integral proteins constitute 20 to 30 percent of all encoded proteins. Peripheral proteins. They are located entirely outside of the lipid bilayer on either the cytoplasmic or extracellular side, yet are associated with the surface of the membrane by non-covalent bonds. Peripheral proteins can usually be solubilized by extraction with high concentration salt solutions that weaken the electrostatic bonds holding peripheral proteins to a membrane. These proteins provide the mechanical support for the membrane and function as enzymes, specialized coats 
or factors that transmit transmembrane signals. Lipid anchored proteins. Numerous proteins are present on the external surface of the plasma membrane which are bound to the membrane by a small complex oligosaccharide linked to a molecule of phosphatidyl inositol that is embedded in the outer leaflet of the lipid bilayer. Peripheral membrane proteins containing this type of glycosyl phosphatidyl inositol linkage are called GPI anchored proteins. Functions of membrane proteins. The following are the six major functions of membrane proteins. Transport. A protein that spans the membrane may provide a hydrophilic channel across the membrane that is selective for a particular solute. Other transport proteins shuttle a substance from one side to the other by changing shape. Some of these proteins hydrolyze ATP as an energy source to actively pump substances across the membrane. Enzymatic activity. A protein built into the membrane may be an enzyme with its active site exposed to substances in the adjacent solution. Signal transduction. A membrane protein may have a binding site with a specific shape that fits the shape of a chemical messenger such as a hormone. The external messenger may cause a shape change in the protein that relays the message to the inside of the cell, usually by binding to a cytoplasmic protein. Cell-cell recognition. Some glycoproteins serve as identification tags that are specifically recognized by membrane proteins of other cells. Intercellular joining. Membrane proteins of adjacent cells may hook together in various kinds of junctions, such as gap junctions or tight junctions. Attachment to the cytoskeleton and extracellular matrix. Microfilaments of the cytoskeleton may be non-covalently bound to membrane proteins, a function that helps maintain cell shape and stabilizes the location of certain membrane proteins. Proteins that can bind to extracellular matrix molecules can coordinate extracellular and intracellular changes. Lipid rafts. When membrane lipids are extracted from cells and used to prepare artificial bilayers, cholesterol and sphingolipids tend to self-assemble into microdomains that are more gelated and highly ordered than surrounding regions consisting primarily of phosphoglycerides. Because of the distinctive physical properties, such microdomains tend to float within the more fluid and disordered environment of the artificial bilayer. As a result, these patches of cholesterol and sphingolipids are referred to as lipid rafts. The image here shows the surface contours of synthetic bilayer containing lipid rafts analyzed by atomic force microscopy. The raft areas shown here are thicker than the rest of the bilayer. The rafts primarily contain sphingomyelin and cholesterol. The sharp yellow spikes are incorporated protein molecules which are attached to the bilayer by a glycosyl phosphatidyl inositol or GPI anchor. Because of the increased thickness and lipid composition, rafts are thought to concentrate specific membrane proteins. Let us now summarize what we have studied in this session. Biological membranes consist of a continuous double layer of lipid molecules in which membrane proteins are embedded. The lipid bilayer is fluid with individual lipid molecules able to diffuse rapidly within their own monolayer. The membrane lipid molecules are amphiphilic. When placed in water, they assemble spontaneously into bilayers which form sealed compartments. There are three major classes of membrane lipids, phospholipids, cholesterol and glycolipids and hundreds of minor classes. The lipid compositions of the inner and outer monolayers are different, reflecting the different functions of the two phases of a cell membrane. Even though the lipid bilayer determines the basic structure of biological membranes, proteins are responsible for most membrane functions serving as specific receptors, enzymes, transport proteins and so on. 
many membrane proteins extend across the lipid bilayer. Some of these transmembrane proteins are single pass proteins in which the polypeptide chain crosses the bilayer as a single alpha helix. Others are multipass proteins in which the polypeptide crosses the bilayer multiple times. Here are a few questions for you to work out. 1. Explain the fluid mosaic model of cell membranes. 2. What is membrane fluidity? Describe the factors affecting membrane fluidity. 3. Explain briefly the different types of membrane proteins and their functions. 4. Explain the role of cholesterol in maintaining cell fluidity. 5. What are lipid rafts? Explain. The following are some books for your reference. Biochemistry by Donald White, Judith G. White, John Willey and Sons Incorporated. Molecular Biology of the Cell, 4th edition by Bruce Alberts, Alexander Johnson, Julian Lewis, Martin Raff, Keith Roberts and Peter Walter, 4th edition Garland Science. Campbell Biology, 9th edition, Jane B. Rees, Lisa A. Uri, Michael L. Kane, Stephen A. Wasserman, Peter B. Minoski, Robert B. Jackson. Molecular Biology Concepts and Experiments by Gerald Karp, 6th edition, John Willey and Sons. Molecular Cell Biology by Harvey Lodish, Arnold Burke, Paul Matsudaira, Chris Kayser, Monty Krieger, Matthew P. Scott, S. Lawrence Sipersky, James Darnell, 5th edition, W. H. Freeman and Company, New York. Thank you for watching this program. Let's meet in the next session. Till then, bye.